Music Gen, or Simple and Controllable Music Generation, is the latest work from Meta AI, which promises to generate exceptional quality music using a single language model architecture. It achieves this using an efficient token interleaving technique. Despite generating music for a max duration of eight seconds, it has the potential to be conditioned by text or melody as prompts to control the output generated. The architecture is built on top of the Encodec project proposed again by Meta in late 2022. The architecture still has an encoder, quantizer, and a decoder. However, they have introduced conditioning modules to handle text and melody inputs for conditioning. In this video, I'm going to dive deeper into MusicGen architecture, starting from vector quantization, the decoder, and the conditioning modules that are integrated with the decoder. Without further ado, and learn what has changed. The end-to-end -end architecture of Encodec has three parts, namely the encoder, the quantizer, and the decoder. Now the encoder is fairly straightforward, like in any other auto encoder module, and it has not been changed much in MusicGen. It is the standard convolutional architecture, which churns out a vector representation for every frame in the input. Now the next step after encoder is the residual vector quantization. Now before understanding RV, RVQ, let's understand vector quantization, which is a precursor to RVQ. Simply said, vector quantization is the process of converting continuous or discrete data into vectors. Now the key goal of quantization is to get a compact representation so that we achieve data compression. There are three steps involved in the process. To understand it, let's take a look at two-dimensional data with dimensions x and y. First, we cluster the given data and get the centroids for each cluster that are shown as blue dots. We can now put together all the centroids in a table and this resulting table is called a code book. Needless to say, the more the centroids, the larger the table has to be to capture all the centroid values. Now, in this toy example, let's say we have eight centroids. The number of bits needed to uniquely represent eight centroids is three, as two power three is eight. So we at least need three bits per second budget to compress this two-dimensional data with eight centroids. Now there's a twist here, however, to this codebook, which is that the size of this codebook depends on the target level of compression we need to achieve. Let's look at a practical example to understand the limitations of vector quantization. Let's say that the target budget is 6,000 bits per second we need to compress the input audio with this budget. Let's say we are getting the input data at a rate of 24,000 Hertz, and we are downsampling or striding this with a factor of 320. As a result, we get 75 frames per second. So in order to achieve 6,000 bits per second at the output, we have to allocate 80 bits for each frame. This enforces a constraint on the codebook that the size of the codebook or the number of centroids has to be at least 2 power 80. Now 2 power 80 is a very high number. Let's also not forget that practically each frame is going to be the output of an encoder network and so its dimension is going to be about say 128 dimensions. And this complexity only increases if we want to improve the quality of quantization. 
So in summary, the complexity of vector quantization increases in no time. And so we have to use a more practical quantization technique. The solution to this problem lies with residual vector quantization. Here, residual implies a multi-stage quantization. Now, instead of having one codebook, we can now have NQ codebooks where NQ is the number of quantizers and is the number we choose. We are illustrated with four code codebooks, but in MusicGen implementation, they use eight codebooks. Now the idea is that we use the input and the first codebook to get the first quantized output from the first codebook. Now this output is then subtracted from the input and it gives the residual for that stage. This residual is then passed to the next codebook to obtain its output and so on and so forth at each stage. One thing to note is that the number of centroids per codebook has reduced from 2 power 80 to 2 power 20. If we choose NQ to be 8, then this number further reduces to 2 power 10, which is just 1024. So we will get one output for each of the codebooks used. We can either add them up or use as a single output, or we can process them in other ways. The way MusicGen addresses these is by using interleaving patterns. Now, we get four outputs, K1, K2, K3, and K4, per input frame from the residual codebooks. There are different ways we can order them or interleave them before we feed them into the decoder. Let's look at the standard way of doing this, which is by flattening. For each time step t, for example t1, we get four outputs. These can be simply flattened to form S1 to 4, which is the sequence step to be inputted into the decoder. Then we take the four outputs from time t2 and lay them flat to fill the sequence steps S5 to S8. This way of simply laying everything in sequence is flattening pattern. Then there's a parallel pattern where for a given time, we literally stack the outputs of all four codebooks, one on top of the other for each sequence step S. For example, S1 has all the four outputs of time step T1. Then there's a delayed pattern where we introduce one step delay per codebook to indicate the order of the codebook itself. Then there's a more promising pattern that has to be that has been adapted from Wally paper, which is that we prioritize the outputs of the first codebook for all the end time stamps. Then we switch to parallel pattern for rest of the codebooks. For this reason, this pattern takes twice the sequence steps compared to the other patterns. Let's take the flattening pattern example to learn how these codebook patterns are used. Let's say we are at sequence step S2. We first note down what codebooks are involved in that particular step. Now in this example, it's K2. Now, as we have access to all the codebooks, we can always retrieve the values corresponding to these indices. Now, the value for each sequence step are summed up to form the representation for that particular step. Additionally, a positional embedding using a sinusoidal is also summed to each time, and the summed values are passed to the decoder. Now, if you have any doubts about positional embedding, we have made a video about it. 
you can always have a look at it and come back to this video. The speciality of MusicGen is that there's the ability to condition with text or any other melody like whistling or humming. If the conditioning is text, they have chosen to use one of the three for encoding the text. First, they explore the pre-trained text encoder T5, which stands for Text-to-Text -text Transfer Transformer, and was published sometime in 2020. Now, then they also try Flan T5, which is a paper released by the name, Scaling Instruction Fine-Tuned Language Models. And there's also claims that combining text and audio for conditioning would do a far better job. So they explore this option as well, and they dub it clap. If we were to condition on melody, such as whistling or humming, we should train with that information as well. For this, one option is to use the chromogram of the conditioning signal. And the chromogram usually consists of eight bins. And when the chromogram is used without modification for training, it seems to overfit. So we suppress the dominant time frequency bins and leave rest of the data to be used for training. Now, these codebook projections along with the positional embeddings are then passed to a transformer-based decoder. There are L layers in the decoder with each layer consisting of a causal self-attention and cross-attention block. The decoder additionally takes as input the conditioning C, which can either be text or melody. If it is text, the cross attention block that takes the conditioning signal C after the text has been encoded by a standard encoder, say T5. Now, if it is melody, they pass the conditioning tensor C as prefix to the transformer input after being converted to a chromogram and processed. As a result, we get the output which is music generated, conditioned on the melody or the text. And that is how MusicGen generates music conditioned on either text or melody. I hope that was useful. Now I spent four days reading this paper to do this video. I'm sure it will take you less than four seconds to hit the like button. So please do, and I will see you in my next video. Take care.